in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you, my dear students? I hope you all are fine and you are enjoying biology of grade 10th. I welcome you once again in Pakistan International School Types virtual learning class for grade 10th and for the subject biology. Dear students, this is our lecture number two regarding chapter number 10. Our today's topic is gaseous exchange in humans because in the previous lesson, we have studied about gaseous exchange in plants. That was so simple because in plants, there are no respiratory or gaseous, special gaseous exchange organs are present like humans or like animals. They are not present. So that are so a uh, uh, um, simple way to just exchange the gases in plants. But in humans, which are, which are in the top most rank of all the organisms. So there are specific uh, respiratory organs or gases exchange organs as well as that is a proper system and well-defined system in human beings so let's get started gases exchange in humans dear students in humans and other higher animals the exchange of gases is carried out by a certain system. That system is called respiratory system. And we can divide that respiratory system in two parts. One is the air passageway and the other is the lungs. So here you can see a general structure of respiratory system of human beings. It is having several parts. We will discuss all the parts one by one, inshallah. Yes. So let's start the air passageway. Air passageway, if we give an outline, so we can have the flow chart like this, how the air passageway work in human beings. So we can see movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the respiratory system. How does it happen? So you'll see first when we inhale oxygen rich air from environment. So first and foremost part which is outside of the body that is nasal cavity or that is called nose. But actually from nose that goes into the nasal cavity. Nose uh, that is external part and inside we are having nasal cavities. We will discuss that uh, in detail later on. Then the air will move into pharynx, then into trachea, then bronchi and bronchioles. Then in the last, because alveoli are the last part of the lungs. Actually, lots of alveoli form, millions of alveoli form the lungs. So then here oxygen and carbon dioxide gases exchange at alveoli level and then they again come back. Like if we just do like this, that is the same pathway. So we uh, will move to uh, just air will move from alveoli to the bronchioles, then to the bronchi, then trachea, then pharynx then nasal cavity and from the nose carbon dioxide will move outside into the environment it seems to be so simple process but actually it is not so simple let's talk about that that how all these parts work Okay, the first one, we will see the parts of air passageway. The first one is our nasal cavity. Nasal cavity consists of 
further several parts. One is nostrils, then it is having, okay, in nostrils, it is having the outside nostrils, this one that is called external nares or that is called external nostrils, which we can see from outside. And these are actually the holes from which the air's come, air comes inside the nose. But nostrils are not only external nostrils. These external nostrils are the connection of the internal body environment to the external body environment. And when we are having the nasal cavity connection with the oral cavity and the in, uh, further internal environment, we are having internal nares or internal nostrils. And in between these two, we are having uh, the empty space and that empty space is called nasal cavity. Now this nasal cavity is having this, these spaces between them. These spaces give more air passage or more surface area to pass the air from the nose. And one more uh, thing is having very important function inside because air moves all around the nasal cavities because they are empty. There is no other organ, nothing else, except these two things. These are cilia and mucus. We know that in our nostrils here, up to here, we are having uh, cilia, but not here. We are having in all our nasal cavity and in the pharynx, in the trachea, throughout, we are having cilia and mucus. What is the function of cilia? Cilia acts like broom. They are hair, small hair-like structure. From external nostrils, we can see it from outside, but very, very small cells like structures, small hair-like structures, those are called cilia, and they act as broom. Like if there are bacteria, there are dust particles in the air when it goes uh, that air goes the dirty air goes inside the nose so that uh, those cilia act like broom and they clean up the air it means the uh, all uh, that germs and all the dust particles just stick with those cilia and the air which go in our lungs, that is clean air. Otherwise, we can, uh, we can be uh, sick very soon due to that, uh, because now the air is polluted. So if the cilia are very less and they are not present, so definitely the lungs will be affected and we can die even. With the cilia, uh, there is, the cells layer with the cilia which makes mucus every time like this this lining and this lining they make mucus every time mucus a sticky substance which is released every time through all this respiratory system and it is this is having a great role uh, regarding to clean the air as well as to make the air warm. For example, we are in winter and we are just taking, uh, just inhaling cold air, but when it goes into our lungs, it is not so cold. It is warmer, normal to warmer, warm. Why? Because these cilia and mucus together, they traps the germs, they traps the uh, dust particles as well as they make the air warmer up to our normal body temperature so that our lungs will not be affected. So our nasal cavity is not only for inhaling the air but it is also 
using for cleaning the air, for warming the air, as well as for moistening the air. This mucus is also used for moistening the air. It means if the air is dry, there is less humidity in the environment here outside, there are less water drops, so that a dry air can irritate or can affect the nasal cavity as well as the lungs. So the mucus also moistens the air and that air will not be uh, will not affect our lungs and nasal cavity okay the next connected part of uh, the nasal cavity is pharynx very very important part of the nasal cavity as well as the oral cavity what is oral cavity actually yes this is oral means mouth so this is the cavity which is related with the mouth teeth tongue our salivary glands and all these compose uh, and make oral cavity so this this cavity is called oral cavity this one Okay, so the pharynx acts as passageway for food on its way to the stomach and for air going to the lungs for food and to carry the air. It means that pharynx is the common pathway for air and food. If you see in this diagram, this circle represents the area of the pharynx. Look, air from nose, it enters here as well as air if we just uh, our air is blocked, uh, sorry, our nose is blocked or we are taking in air, inhaling from the mouth. So it goes from here. So this part where the oral cavity and fair, uh, nasal cavity both are joining, this part is called pharynx. So you can see here the oral cavity, this one, this is tongue and this is oral cavity and uh, we can see here internal layers and uh, uh, they are joining here this part is called pharynx and that is what muscular organ and it extend to the opening of esophagus and the larynx if you see this one esophagus esophagus is what Yes, that is called, what is esophagus? You have studied in grade nine, that is called food pipe. Yes, and in larynx, this one, and this is esophagus, and it is having, uh, it is um, the uh, we can say uh, the collective connection to just get uh, air will get inside the larynx and then it will go into uh, uh, from here look sorry this is this is larynx and uh, through here from pharynx and then go into the larynx and then into the trachea like from uh, windpipe and from here the same uh, oral cavity that food goes directly into the esophagus. How it will happen, we will see inshallah in the next slides. Okay, so next connected part with the pharynx that is glottis. Glottis is actually an opening at the floor of the pharynx. This is pharynx, as you see, this one. And in the floor of the pharynx, we are having this opening. Actually, this opening is just connected with the larynx. If you see, this is larynx. And this is opening of the larynx. So at the floor of the pharynx, but at... Uh, uh, the opening of the, uh, what we can say, the larynx, we are having a part that is called glottis. 
and that is having a great role here one very important thing that in this part because this is the connection of oral cavity and nasal cavity that the pharynx is so how food is directly goes food directly goes into the esophagus and air goes into the larynx how does it happens yeah there is an other part which separates these two processes that is called epiglottis epi means upper and glottis means the opening of the larynx so that is actually the upper cartilage is cover which just protects or separates these two pathways accordingly you can see here this is cartilaginous part and this is epiglottis this is larynx so that epiglottis allows air to pass through the larynx into the rest of respiratory system when we swallow the food when we swallow the food what happened uh, we swallow food or we drink so what happened our uh, food directly goes into the esophagus how because this covers like this it closes this pathway it closes the pathway of larynx like it closes this opening which opening that is glottis so how does it happen we'll see here yes you uh, you can see uh, yes now you can see here this one this is the food particle which directly goes into the esophagus here is epiglottis you can see look epiglottis just raised down like a cap and cover this glottis and larynx you see here this is glottis and this is pharynx and this is epiglottis it covers the opening of the larynx so the food directly goes into the esophagus actually we do not feel this process this happens in microseconds when we swallow our food but sometimes it happens if unintentionally we are just taking our food so unintentionally something uh, just gets uh, stuck with this um, a uh, glottis this portion so some very small portion of that just touches with this uh, larynx so what happens yes we cough we cough a lot at within no time that is actually related with our nervous system this which holds and controls all these activities if we don't cough that can go into our Uh, just larynx and into the trachea and then into our lungs and it can block the alveolar block any bronchi bronchiole so the person can die uh, within no time okay so next connected part of that that is larynx as we have seen larynx before this is larynx which is uh, uh, um like which is related with pharynx and the first part we can say of the uh, respiratory um, or a windpipe sorry windpipe and uh, its opening is called glottis if you see here the tongue this is epiglottis and this is food by that's called esophagus this is windpipe that is called trachea so what can happen uh sorry here is a uh, larynx and uh, internal structure of larynx is like this this is trachea or windpipe and here is epiglottis which covers this uh pathway while closing uh while closing when we um, eat or drink something so in this larynx so that is called guarded air passageway between the pharynx and the trachea this larynx 
is having a, a very unique speciality. What is that? It is having vocal cords. Cords means thread-like structures and vocal means voice. So this is the organ from which the voice or the uh, uh, voice is produced. You can see in this diagram, this is larynx and it is having these vocal cords thread like structures very tiny tiny threads are there like we are having in guitar and in violin especially in the guitar like this we are having uh, that uh, that are invisible here but the collectively they are called vocal cords because when the air comes from this passageway to outside the uh, these vocal cords vibrate and after the vibration the sound is produced the speech is produced speech actually is another um, what we can say another uh, process speech by coming out of air these vocal cords vibrate and by their vibrations and with the help of the movement of our tongue, cheeks, and lips, and jaws, and all the muscles of our mouths, then we make specific sounds that is called speech. And that is having, uh, that is uh, the special quality of human beings with which other organisms don't have. And that quality makes the human being superior to all. So that larynx uh, is visible in uh, the male and it is invisible in uh, female, uh, females. Uh, and that is also called, that larynx is called Adam's apple and it is uh, visible from the neck outside after uh, puberty, like after uh, 14, 13, 14 years age. And uh, in males, uh, uh, like you know, that voice gets changed uh, after puberty. Okay, let's come to trachea, which is the next connected part of larynx. If you see this one, this is larynx and with the larynx we are having another connected part that is a long tube like structure that is called a trachea and that is also called windpipe that is a hollow tube and connected to the larynx or that is called larynx is also called voice box because it uh, it is having vocal cords which make the voice and it this uh, trachea is connection between this larynx to the lungs through bronchi. Trachea actually, uh, you can see it's a structure properly, uh, excuse me, uh, properly through this um, animation that it is a, uh, made of C shaped rings. And in these rings, uh, there is a th a thin membranous walls and muscles are there. And these are cartilaginous rings. And at the back, if you see, at the back, there is esophagus. Look, this one. Due to esophagus is very thin, that is muscular, but that trachea is cartilaginous. And because at the back it is having like this it is having here esophagus so that's why it forms c uh, c shape it's not complete circular form okay so we are having the next part that is called bronchi or bronchioles. So if you see in this animation from larynx, this is called trachea. You see this one? When we go down, 
this trachea divides into two smaller tubes to enter both of the lungs, the right and left lungs. So when they enter into the lungs, so this trachea is divided into two more branches. These are called bronchi, bronchi for plural and bronchus for singular. They, the C-shaped rings, they are for, they become smaller, the diameter becomes smaller and the C-shaped rings gradually when it moves further, further, further up to the last, these rings are gonna uh, be disappear, are gonna disappear. When the smaller bronchi attain the diameter of one mm or less, what happened? They are called bronchioles. Now see, these are bronchi, two bronchi are there, and when they are less than this, now they are called bronchioles. And these bronchioles totally lack cartilages. Bronchioles are man, uh, mainly made up of smooth muscles and are arranged in circular pathway. And these bronchioles later on just transformed or changed into very, very tiny ducts or tube-like structure. Those are called alveolar duct. We'll talk about it in the next slide, but first you see it's a structure properly. Um, this one, if you see here, well, this is trachea, and this uh, highlighted part, these are bronchi, and now they are changed into bronchioles up to the last and from alveolar duct into the alveoli. Now we will see the last part of uh, this passageway that are called air sacs or alveoli. Bronchioles continue to divide and subdivided and subdivided into the last part. These, these parts, these, you can see this one. These are called alveolar duct. Actually, they don't have, they, it seems like this, but they don't have circular uh, rings or C-shaped uh, rings. They are just muscles only. These ducts are, uh, vessels like structures and they are having in the last uh, the functional unit of the lungs those are called air sacs or those air sacs are appear in the form of the bunches of the grapes they are called alveoli so our air passageway in the last opens into alveoli there are almost 700 million alveoli present in the lungs of the mammals. For example, in human beings. So you can see from here, we have started from the nasal cavity, from this part, larynx, epiglottis, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and then last, we have just come into alveoli. And this is the alveoli part, like these are, alveolar ducts and uh, they are just uh, uh, having and just end up into the bunches of uh, uh, the alveoli grapes like structures this is uh, uh, the cut part cross section of those alveoli and if you see how the air moves out uh, in and out of these alveoli and if you see the little portion of this here, the gases are exchanged because that is alveoli are covered with lots of capillaries where the gases are exchanged. From this blue, because the, it is having deoxygenated blood is coming from here and just it is going there and because it is just uh, covering around the alveoli and they exchange carbon dioxide into uh, the, uh, these, these capillaries, for example, carbon dioxide moves out from this blood and just uh, um, end. There are air spaces and oxygen just move into these alveoli through these arteries. These are the veins and these are the arteries 
and as you have studied in grade nine, the arteries and veins are just divided into arterioles and venules, and then into the capillaries. And here the gases are exchanged, and then they just move back into from the lungs. The oxygenated blood move into the heart, and from heart to whole of the body. Okay, so likewise we have discussed some of uh, uh, and the blood circulation, but we'll uh, in detail we'll uh, later on uh, we'll discuss that. So our uh, uh, second part of the respiratory system is the lungs. Lungs. There are two lungs. We know this. Yes. Where are they located? You can see from this animation, they are located in the chest cavity, under the rib cage, and there are muscles around it. Like for, these are ribs, and there are 12 pair of ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten and the last two are at the back this one and uh, here is another one. look look this one and this one they are called floating ribs because they are not having connected with this sternum this uh, chest bone so 12 pair of ribs cover <coughs> these lungs for the protection of the lungs and especially the heart which is present here as well as they are having muscles, these muscles, between the ribs. These are called intercostal muscles. Cost, uh, that is the combination um, of uh, the other, uh, like uh, it comes from the Greek words, or uh, so maybe Latin words. So that means uh, in, uh, intercostal means in the bones. So that these muscles connected these two bones, so like that there is uh, a full covering is formed around these lungs. So at the floor of the chest cavity, from the down that is also covered and very helpful muscular organ is present that is thick muscular layer that is called a diaphragm. And that uh, diaphragm, we will discuss later on in the next lesson, that how does it help to uh, uh, the exchange of gases. So if we see this, uh, this one, you can see like this, the movement. That how does uh, the work, uh, they work like uh, they are the protection of the lungs and they are also helpful for uh, the inhalation and exhalation. So what about the structure of the lungs? Actually, the lungs are covered with the double layered thin membranous sac uh, sacs. Those sacs, uh, sacs means covering called pleura. And this pleura, you can see, these are the lungs. Actually, we cannot see them. They are very, very thin indeed. But that is uh, naturally uh, protection for the lungs. There are two layers of uh, pleura. One is outer pleural membrane or outer layer of the pleura and the inner pleural membrane. This is outer layer that is called pleural parietal and this is inner layer that is called pleural visceral. And these two layers are also having one more thing between them that is called pleural fluid. And that fluid, like we have seen pericardium in ninth grade ninth, that uh, yes, and pericardial fluid was there, which uh, helps uh, uh, the heart for the, its protection as well as it reduces the friction. Like that, pleural fluid, it just gives uh, less friction or frictionless when the lungs 
um, contract or when they uh, a shrink or when they expand while taking in or taking out air. So for the movement of the lungs, this fluid is very, very important uh, to reduce its friction and to get it safe and just protection from sudden shocks by which our lungs gets protected. So uh, you see the nature has protected our lungs by lots of ways by the pleural membranes, by pleural fluid, by ribcage, muscles, diaphragm, etc. Now we'll see that lungs are formed by different lobes. It is not a lump of uh, just meat that is spongy as well due to the uh, lots of um, alveoli present in it but the both of the lungs are just a collection of pieces those are called lobes we are having a two lungs so left lung that is slightly smaller than the right lung this uh, difference in the size is due to the presence of heart in the left lung. lung. If you see in this animation, you can see here, here, that portion that is uh, just left here, just uh, to accommodate heart inside it. And the right lung is slightly bigger if you see this one. And if you see its structure, the right lung is having three lobes. If you see, uh, first we'll see left lung, one, and the two, it is having two lobes, and the right lung is having three lobes, one, two, and the third one is larger. And here you can see the left lung, one and two lobes. Okay, that was the um, brief description about the structure of uh, the lungs as well as its functions. And now we'll see how the blood supply is done. That uh, we'll see here through this diagram that there are blood vessels, uh, uh, the blood vessels which uh, are related with the lungs. Those are called pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. Actually, the deoxygenated blood come from the body to the heart, as we have seen in grade nine. Then it will go into these blue branches, blue vessels. Commonly we say them veins, but these are called pulmonary arteries here. So this is the only artery which is having deoxygenated blood. Why it is called a pulmonary artery? Because it is going away from the heart. And here, if you see, when the blood is uh, um, oxygenated and deoxygenated are exchanged in these alveoli, so the blood goes through this red vessel, and from here and from both of the lungs come into this left side, and uh, from here into the ventricle, and then it goes through here into all the body from iota but remember this pulmonary vein this is the only vein in the body which is having oxygenated blood because this vessel is going towards the heart that's why it is called vein and it is called pulmonary artery because it just carries the blood where yes uh, away from the heart towards the lungs and then here in alveoli the gases are exchanged you can see the process yes uh, i hope you understood this process of pulmonary circulation because you have we just uh, see that in detail in grade ninth as well dear students I hope you uh, 
got lots of information about the respiratory system and you have understood and enjoyed the lecture as well. We'll continue inshallah this lecture uh, um, in lecture number uh, three and we will see that uh, how we do breathing and what is the mechanism of breathing uh, uh, in the next lecture inshallah uh, till then till then wish you all the best